California San Andreas fault is about to crack and here's what will happen when it does. San Andreas fault line, San Jacinto fault line in California. Now what's coming up is a very short clip by NOAA having to do with the tsunami that will also follow. This was a 9.2 magnitude earthquake from the Cascadia fault line felt all along the Pacific coastlines. Look what happens when it hits Hawaii and Hawaii reverberates the wave back to the west coast. The tsunami of course goes all the way down to Indonesia, Asia, New Zealand, Australia and Latin America. And of course this is such a big earthquake that is also felt all the way to the east coast. And the waves are still coming back as you can see. San Andreas, the big one. The director of the Southern California Earthquake Center, Thomas Jordan, announced recently that uh, something that sent a chill down the spine of every Californian, he said the San Andreas Fault appears to be in a critical state and as such could generate a large earthquake imminently. Now, I'm not being a fear monger, I'm just reporting to you what scientists are announcing. San Andreas Fault appears to be in a critical state and could generate a large earthquake imminently. Of course, the reiteration of the seismic hazard to Californians will be nothing surprising, but what's new is the warning that the southern portion of the fault, quote, looks like it's locked, loaded, and ready to go, quote unquote. Now, they do have drills every year as well. Uh, we don't know how many people are involved or who knows exactly what to do at any point in time once the big one hits. Why is this eminent seismologist, Thomas Jordan, making these alarming statements? The fact is that there has not been a major release of stresses in the southern portion of the San Andreas Fault System since 1857. So putting it in simple terms, the San Andreas is one of many fault systems roughly make, marking the border between the Pacific and North American tectonic plates. And both these plates are moving in an approximately northern direction, but the Pacific plate is moving faster than its North American counterpart, and that means that stresses between the plates are constantly building up. Now, as we know, in 1906, some of these stresses were catastrophically released in the San Francisco Bay Area with the San Francisco earthquake. That was a 7.8 magnitude. And again, in Northern California, during the 6.9 magnitude in 1989, the Loma Prieta earthquake. Events of these magnitudes have not occurred along the San Andreas Fault in the south of the state. The 1994 Northridge event was associated with a nearby but separate fault system, leading to the suggestion that one is imminent, and given the amount of stress that might actually have accumulated, when that big one arrives, it will be the big one. Now, how big is big? So just how big could a potential earthquake in California be? And is it possible that the destruction demonstrated in the film San Andreas could actually come to fruition? Californians will be reasonably pleased with the answers to these questions. In the film San Andreas Fault produced, produces the earthquake with a magnitude of 9.0, while not unheard of globally, as we knew from what we recently saw in, for example, Japan. Earthquakes of this size are generally confined to regions of the Earth where subduction, 
where one tectonic plate is being forced below another. That's where it's happening, for example, in Chile and Japan. As for the tectonic situation in California, that's different because two plates are sliding past each other. Now, as such, the recent predictions limit the possible maximum earthquake magnitude along the San Andreas Fault System to about 8.0 magnitude, although with a 7% probability estimate that such an event could occur in Southern California within the next 30 years, so that's not too long off. And over the same period, there is a 75% chance of a magnitude 7.0 event. While magnitudes of 7, 8, or 9 might sound negligibly different, the energy for such earthquakes varies significantly. The magnitude 9.0 event releases 32 times more energy than a magnitude 8.0 and a thousand times more energy than a 7.0. Can you imagine a thousand times more than a 7.0? Obviously, be it a seven or an eight, damage is inevitable. The whole sequence of events depicted in the film San Andreas is unlikely. For example, the San Andreas Fault is not beneath the ocean, and as such, any slippage along it could not displace water to the extent that a tsunami would be generated. The opening up of a massive chasm is also from the land of fantasy, as the plates are sliding relative to each other, not away from each other. What's realistic, though, is that a great amount of destruction is likely. While the building codes in California are stringent, recommending retrofitting of seismic protection measures to older buildings and preventing the construction of new buildings near the known fault line, there is no way to make a building 100% safe. Now, predicting devastation. In attempting to understand the effects of a large southern San Andreas earthquake, the U.S. Geological Survey made a model of a 7.8 magnitude event with slippage of about anywhere from two to seven meters or two to seven yards. A seven is about uh, 21 feet to represent the stresses that build up in the area since the last large event occurred. So from this model, the USGS found that damage would be most severe to construction standing straddling at the fault and fortunately, constructions of this sort are very few and far between following the 1972 Alkist Priolo Earthquake Fault Zoning Act. What would be affected by a slippage like this are the 966 roads, 90 fiber, opt fiber optic cables, 39 gas pipes, pipelines, pipes, and 141 power lines that cross the fault zone. So the total cost of damage to buildings was under this type of a model, estimated at about $33 billion, with modern buildings faring, faring well, but older buildings being particularly susceptible. Fires would take place and would rage, as they did following the Northridge earthquake as gas mains and mains water pipes become severed. Also, the damage from resulting fires is estimated as more costly than resulting from the initial shaking. So it's the fires that would be costing most of the destruction. The death toll would be estimated at about 2,000 people. And just when things don't look like they can get any worse, the main event will have destabilized tectonics of the region to such an extent that a series of potentially powerful aftershocks will begin. Now, if we take a look at what happened in New Zealand in 2011 at Christchurch, New Zealand was struck by a 6.2 magnitude event. And since then, the city of Christchurch and the surrounding region have experienced more than 10,000 aftershocks, 10,000 after the main earthquake. Fortunately, the film San Andreas is pure fiction, featuring the levels of exaggeration we're all used to from filmmakers who ironically also are based in Southern California. So that is the fear mongering in the film. Now, even so, 
Probably the San Andreas is likely to generate a significant earthquake in the not too distant future. And when it arrives, the damage will be significant. Southern California will be massively effective, affected, but Californians are no stranger to earthquakes. And the infrastructure of the state in recent times has been designed with earthquake protection in mind. So you can forget about the tsunamis and the deep chasms opening up, but do expect violent shaking, building damage, fires, and widespread economic impacts because of the region as being out of action for a for potentially long period of time. Now, uh, we do have embedded here, as you can see, the uh, this is from Pacific, Pacific Tidal Warning, and it has to do with NOAA's uh, video of what would happen if an earthquake hits uh, San Andreas and a tidal wave comes crossing the whole of the Pacific Ocean. So you see that even the scientists between them, I guess, it appears, don't agree with each other. In this article, IFL Science, we just read that the San Andreas Fault will not uh, create a tsunami, whereas NOAA says there will be a tsunami. Now, I don't know if it's exactly from the San Andreas or from the Cascadia Fault System, which is just north of that, reaching into Seattle. In any event, this is an earthquake-prone area, and uh, anything could happen with a big one. What can I say? So I'll leave links below for you for this.